This is a Wi-Fi 6 router called NetDuma R3. And on the inside, it's running Duma OS 4. That's right, folks, routers with operating systems. It's only going to get more interesting from here on in. So strap in and let's review the NetDuma R3 RGB router for gamers. So hello, friends, Techman Pat here. The R3 touts a revolutionized gaming experience with the requirement being that you're playing online games. With standout features like GeoFilter 2.0, Smart Boost, Steady Ping, Ultimate Insight, RGB lighting of course, and the ease of use, it does sound like something an online gamer could benefit from on paper. So in this video, we'll explore these functions and see if they're worthwhile, let alone the R3 as a Wi-Fi 6 router. Big thanks to NetDuma for sending this for review. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get started by rolling the intro. For the uninitiated online gamers, what the hell is NetDuma? We'll take it from Netgear, it's not a joke. Netgear recently partnered with NetDuma to bring NetDuma gaming features into Netgear's own routers. So if that doesn't give you some validation, I really don't know what will. NetDuma users swear by their spaceship-esque routers, and I'm going to come out and say it. I get it, it works. I can see the light, it's over there. However, watch on, as not is all as rosy as it could be. <laughs> NetDuma is a router manufacturer and software developer who has specialized in making routers that make online games better for end users. Duma OS 4, the fourth iteration of the custom operating software, embodies the solution to the core issues that strike down a great online gaming experience. High ping, quality of service on the network for each game, and to finish off the holy trinity, simplicity. So let's start with the hardware. A really nice design with some cool RGB lighting effects that will be either loved or hated by some. Either way, it's not a deal breaker. It looks nice. It has four antennas that give the Wi-Fi 6 capable router some much needed speed. On the back, we have five gigabit ethernet ports with one acting as a WAN port, a power button, and a USB 3 port. As far as build quality goes, it's good enough. A side note, the box it comes with is quite fancy. I feel like great care has been taken with this product by someone who is proud and stands by what they've built. I can respect that. Spec-wise, we have Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax, which is dual band gigabit AX3000, a 1.5 quad-core ARM processor, 256 megabytes of DDR3 RAM, and it comes with a single short Cat6 cable in the box. Now that's value. I tested the Wi-Fi capabilities and had a great experience. No drops, distance was great, even through walls, but adding a mesh system to your home and connecting it to the NetDoom R3 is a great combo I would highly recommend. Overall, when comparing the R3 to other routers in this price range of around 300 Australian dollars, I would say you're getting value for money. And if you're using this in an apartment or a small home, it will be perfect for you. However, it is software where NetDuma shines. Even Netgear sees the value. So let's jump into the Duma OS web client. There are three core pillars of the platform. First is Smart Boost, which is an automated quality of service profile. Think of it as a smart traffic controller based on your performance. The standout feature here is the quality of service settings in most routers and modems. They are limited in functionality and customization. Beyond that, they are tedious to set up with built-in profiles not always hitting the mark. You can add devices that you want to receive the most bandwidth, and you can also tag activities such as streaming or gaming to be prioritized above all else. This gives you some really interesting combinations and flexibility in addressing your homes or devices, and Duma OS makes it super easy to access. One thing you should notice straight away is that it does away with the old router web settings and provides a more modern look. I really like this approach and I would recommend this router just for its intuitive and easy to use QoS. However, what I would like to add is that if your internet is slow, this is very heavy handed and can cause some devices to get much less bandwidth. But at the end of the day, your top line device and activity won't suffer. I specifically avoided starting with the game related features to ground this product a little bit, but let's go have. Geofilter and oh boy, first of all, it's good. 
but like the QoS, it's heavy handed and can cause issues. As you can see in the world of online video games where there are no dedicated servers anymore and everything is matchmaking, where you get paired with people from around the world, you can put a fence around yourself with this tool or to where you want your competition to come from. Basically, you're forcing the router to only let matchmaking happen in the area outlined. So if you generally get pushed onto US servers while living in Australia, then circle our little country here and it will extend your matchmaking times, but you'll end up getting connected to gamers within Australia. This sounds fantastic on paper, but you're breaking the game's logic in a roundabout way. Depending on the game, let's take COD for example, because that's what I tested with. Yes, I was getting games with more Australian players and my ping was great, but the other players' pings weren't as good as mine and some were even so much more skilled than me that it wasn't a great gaming experience. So while matchmaking may not get you the best ping, you will probably end up with a great overall match experience with just a slightly higher ping. This feature needs to be used with several buckets of salt is what I'm trying to get at. The best way I found it to work with is by having a much larger catch-all net and avoiding the errors that you know cause issues. Basically avoid circling your suburb, for example, because there's probably not that many COD players here, but also don't just circle your state, for example. This feature inadvertently caused some other issues too, where certain websites take ages to load or don't load at all, where the server they host data in is outside that circle. While the settings say it's for select games, sometimes it ends up being a catch-all, so something to keep in mind. On this page, you may have also noticed Steady Ping. By turning on Steady Ping, you get a little pop-up called Ping Optimizer. Now, according to the physical box, it can upgrade your ping by lowering it from 154 milliseconds to 14 milliseconds in just a few minutes. Highly dubious advertising, and my results were a bit more realistic and shown by the software, so take that with a few more buckets of salt, it went from 66 milliseconds to 54 milliseconds. The question I was left with, what server am I pinging? And how does this relate to my games, which are beholden to matchmaking? Now, ping enhancers are effectively VPNs that try to take a shorter path across the internet to a specific location. In this case, they're trying to shorten the path between you and the game server. The length of the path is usually measured in terms of hops and how many pieces of hardware your data passes through before it hits its destination. So if you can reduce the number of hops your connection takes to a location, you can reduce the ping and there will be less travel time and less overhead. The other element is geographical distance it has to cover. If you're in Australia and your connection is being routed through NZ before it ends up in, let's say, Singapore, then you're going to experience a lot more latency than if it took a more direct route to Singapore because it has to cover several thousand more kilometers. If one of these two things is the case for you, then you will get a lot of benefit from Duma OS. What it won't do is make your connection better if your brother, roommate, or whoever is downloading copious amounts of p -a movies or watching Netflix and you have limited bandwidth. It also won't fix anything with the connection in your house, such as inconsistencies with a wireless connection, for example. The ping heat map is also a nifty tool, but I would have preferred to see it built into the geo filter. I don't have much use for knowing what ping I can get to all these servers in the world for a specific game, unless I can action something with the information, such as geofencing the server, I only want to connect with and the players from around that area. Ultimately, the value add here is Duma OS, and I think that people will use and get benefit from it. There is, however, one killer feature that I think everyone can make use of, and that is the built-in ad blocker. And damn it, it's good. Finally, my iPhone, iPad, and everything else that's not a PC can have an ad-free experience at home. Maybe my smart fridge that I don't have. Be warned, those sites with excessive adverts will load much slower on mobile. Once you see how many ads Duma OS is blocking on your mobile devices, you'll be scared to go outside. Within minutes of turning it on, it began to flood with blocked adverts and links, and it was quite amazing to watch. A side use case is to install this router at your grandparents' place to help them avoid scams, ads, and dodgy links. Finishing up, Duma OS was easy to set up. The UI is fantastic, it provides some nice visual representation of network activity, and the wireless performance is great. On the hardware side, the NetDuma R3 is lacking the hybrid VPN feature from the previous router model, which lets your router act as a VPN client that allows you to apply a VPN provider to any device in your home. You can choose the game's ports or applications you do 
do or do not want their VPN to be applied to. This means you can protect the devices or services that need it without forcing the rest of your network to go through a VPN, which is usually slower than a normal connection. Hybrid VPN is supposedly to be coming to the R3, not sure when though. Overall, for around 300 Australian dollars, it's a pretty good buy. I think QoS and built-in ad blocker could bring in some non-gaming customers, so I'm calling it out. For gamers, the Smart Booster, GeoFilter, and Ping Optimizers have the chops to add a bit more value, and it's so easy to use and set up, I think anybody can do it. So I can happily recommend the router, which it may see limited use in Australia due to our geographical location, especially with the GeoFilter. Europe and the US, I can definitely see lots of benefit for people there. So big thanks to NetDimmer for sending me the router for review, and a huge thanks to you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in another one. See ya, bye. Thank you.